this. I don't have the layered version, obviously. I'm just going to try this. I'm going to do a real half-ass selection here. Okay. Because you would have this layered. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if I need to do the whole thing, but let's see. Obviously, I've never selected anything like this, so don't ever do this. So, that's an, I'll just select it to here. Yeah. I'm just gonna say, you know, you have the clouds on a layered file, right? Yeah. That's really half-assed. But <clears throat> what I would probably do is I would come down here and sample that and come here and go to hue saturation and click the little colorize button. Oh, okay. And I'm gonna put that more into the same, and then you gotta desaturate a little bit. We'll put all the smoke in the same thing right got it okay <clears throat> now sometimes you know you're playing warm cool i get it but i think in this case i think monochromatic is probably going to be more your friend okay sounds good i'll probably do that with all this and all this i would think like they're all their faces too as well yeah i think probably everything could just be it just feels like it all wants to be monochromatic to me I can see that too. Yeah. I was just, like you said, we're was playing with the warm and cool yeah, idea. I mean, and sometimes that works great, you know, but it just, this feels like it wants to be, um, uh, more like unified. The other thing, I, and I don't, it probably wouldn't work, but I was wondering if you took this, this is just, I wouldn't do it. I'm just, I, cause I never noticed it, but you know, so they have this, that's their logo or whatever, right? Yes. And I don't know if this would work or not. Oops. So you got to keep the cube in there, so it probably wouldn't work. I was just wondering if she was over here, and that smoke is what led up. Oh, the, I see. Yeah. You know, or maybe it's a mm -hmm. maybe it's a horizontal, but then you need that or a square or something. It would all obviously it would depend on what the parameters were of size. Yeah. That's cool. Their logo. That's cool logo. Yeah. So anyway, let's Sorry, Mike. What did you say again? <laughs> it's a cool logo. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Wait, mm -hmm. I want to try something here, just to get a sense of this. That actually does look better. Monochromatic. Yeah. It all sort of bleed, blends together a little better. You know, and then yeah, I'll give you, you could still find a touch of color. I don't know. I'd probably just do it monochromatic. The thing yeah. about something like um, Lightbox to me is, and, and they're doing that, um, and you're doing that, uh, is I think it should be fairly sophisticated. Right? Right. You know, it doesn't need to be all, I mean, it could be, but <clears throat> to me, those things, the more sophisticated they are, the more attractive and appealing they are, I think, to designers and things like that. Like, I don't want to, it's not that I don't want to go to Comic Con, but I'm not going to be as into Comic Con probably as I would be this. Right. You know, I've never been to Comic Con. <clears throat> uh, Mean, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, you, you, okay, for your final, you uploaded a 124 meg layered file. Yeah, I didn't send the um, JPEG image because last night I got off work around seven. And right after, I just immediately went into trying to do as much as I can with my poster. And so it, it, around, around the time of like 10, I just submitted it just to, just to submit it. And then I was going to work on it. All right. Um, just when you do week. it, when you do it, though, submit the JPEG for a final like that. Just because it takes two seconds to do it, right? Okay, yeah. No, it just slipped my mind. Totally okay, forgot. that's fine. I, that's fine. And the other thing, the reason I say I make a thing out of it is... I mean, partly it takes long to download, but whatever. It's like if a client tells you to send them a TIFF or whatever it is they want, you got to send them what they want, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, these are...
Ian, you there? Yep. yep. This looks a hundred times better. Oh yeah, that's great. But yeah, you just put some lighting on his face and added the um, blue in the picture as well, and then the title. The only thing I'd probably do is pop the uh, type more, get a lighter value in there. Okay. It's getting yeah. lost in there. But that looks a hundred times better. Yeah, for sure. You gave me a front focal image or focal point, right? Definitely. Yeah. That's absolutely. a nice job. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, do the type a little more. Um, yeah, you just got to pop the value, that's all. Yeah, definitely. Good job, though. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I like that you worked on it. You've made it better and better and better. That's what I like when people do that. That's okay, fine. John. Yes, sir. You see how much better that looks? Yes, definitely. I wasn't feeling this one at all until you told me just put in the red light. I'm like, you know what? Cool. And I started tweaking out on the light source. And that's what I love, by the way, is that when you go, I was just thinking about this because I'm working on some paintings and stuff. And um, you know what I do all the time? And, because like sometimes you you have something you're working on you go it's not done but i'll look at it and go i don't know what to do with it but then what i try and do is find the most obvious thing where it's like clearly i need to fix that and i start there and as soon mm -hmm. as i start on it it breaks the ice and then I'll, as soon as i finish that i'll go oh i need to do this i need to do this and it'll just sort of lead me into the work does that make sense definitely i think i was just getting too hung up on the fact that it was a montage and juice juice ends better than me <laughs> Is better than everybody. Man. I know. I'm. I'm just joking. <laughs> He's a weird dude too. Have you ever talked to him? No, I've. I've only watched his video on like Netflix or whatever. Yeah, which is a weird uh, documentary. Yeah, it very, but it shows a lot of really cool work. He, ha I know, but I, and I love Drew <laughs> Struzan, but he's so socially inept. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's an artist, man. But it's just so <laughs> obvious how socially inept he is. No, yeah, he he seems awkward from the video, but yeah, I didn't know if he was just awkward. nervous for the camera or that was his mo. You know, part of that is I think though you're in a you're in a field where you're alone all the time. You know, you've got to be alone all the time. Right, especially him. He must have been cranking out like eighty two posters a day. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. <laughs> so it's time to socialize. He used to live up here. He used to live up by me here. Of course, everyone does apparently. But he was talking about back in the old days. That they would. It's way worse in the old days because they would go. Like he would do the, he was doing a poster or something. It was a poster, I think. They're like, we need it by Thursday. You know, this, these crazy posters he was doing, right? And then they'd go, and he was saying, he goes, I was living in the mountain. He didn't say wherever, he, I know he was living up here. He was living in the mountains and it was snowing and all that. And they go, we're gonna send a courier over there at six o'clock in the morning. So he's just furiously working all night. And these guys would hand these things off to these guys while they're still wet and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. You know? So he presented it. <laughs> uh, and then somebody I read uh, just recently, they lost Time Magazine. They lost the cover because they had shipped the, the illustration to New York. And because of the weather, the plane was circling the airport. And they're like, screw it. And they threw something else on the cover. So he did all the work and lost the cover. That's, that's a very annoying. Time thing. Magazine. Back when Time Magazine was like a holy grail. Yeah. Know? There you have. That was my cheesy, uh, like '80s slasher. Very gory, very grainy, like a VHS. Oh, yeah. Just kind of, just kind of had a different typeface. Yeah, it seems to lose a little. It looked brighter on my screen for some reason. But I think a, a more bold, you know, a typeface that makes a statement. Okay. Where's Victor at? Is Victor here? Yeah, I'm here. This looks a lot clearer to me. Did you change it up quite a bit? I did. I made some adjustments, yeah. I think here, this symbol is part of this box, right? Uh, no, actually, I put it on the other box. Oh, so it is on the box behind it? Yeah. Okay. I, I just make sure that that's clear because I was confused as to whether this was coming out of this or if it was printed on this. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, that's minor. I'd also probably try and soften this up a little bit so it doesn't feel so cut out, this bandana. Yeah. And, you know, you could probably just really subtly. And the other thing I would probably do is I would put here.
wherever the lights, I don't know where the lights come from, I didn't look, but let's say here. I'm gonna do this real sloppy. I probably put a cast shadow here. That'll help a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Give it some distance. Yeah, so it feels a little more dimensional. That cash out is probably a little too big. It probably have to be smaller. Um, it's not, I don't want it to make a big statement. Oh, by the way, you guys, you got the video I gave you guys last night, right? Does anybody have questions on that or was it all fairly um, straightforward? Pretty straightforward for for me, anyways. Okay, good. Yeah, I think you went over some of that already before, so it's like kind of a couple things for like review. Yeah, okay, definitely. Good. Yeah, okay, because to me, again, I was thinking about this this morning. <clears throat> for some reason, I don't know why, but when I started learning about channels, which I didn't learn until I'd been using Photoshop forever, and my ex-girlfriend was showing it to me, right? I just didn't get it. I don't know why, it just didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> and maybe she didn't explain it well, that's probably it. Or, or it's just me, whatever. But basically, it's storing your selection in one of those channels. It's making an alpha channel and storing it. That all makes sense, correct? Okay. Um, it's a really handy tool, you guys can see that, right? Yes. Um, when you get into those kind of complex selections and things like that, just like what we're doing with this, we were talking about it yesterday, you know, that you could use that to select out the writers on the horizon and that kind of thing and drop it into the bottom. It's a really good tool when you've got that kind of thing with like the tree or whatever in the background. It's just, there's no way you're going to pin tool that. You know what I mean? And you guys understood the um, overlay um, brush trick, right? It just yeah, isn't going to paint on white. It isn't going to paint on black, whatever it is. But it, 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 that'll be something you can use later on. And you're also, it starts to help you to understand, I think, the different functions that these um, uh, layer, oh, layer blends have. Okay? Yeah, that pen was cool. Like, it's, it's right there at the top, and I never even messed with that. That's awesome. Which one? You, using the brush as an overlay or a whatever type of... Uh... Like a select, for a selection tool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, what? But you could also, you know, use that same idea to, you know, to paint something so it doesn't paint over it and all, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, I, I never thought of that. I always fill in and then go it over to my layer and mess with it. So now did you go to this one, John, or did you do all three? I, I just uplo uploaded the other one. I was finishing the, the cross okay. one this morning. You like how it came out? Yeah, I, I was kind of stuck last night. I was trying to make a blue background and I, I just scrapped it and started over this morning and kind of went more in the direction you were saying and I like it much better. Here's an interesting thing, you guys, since we just talked about layers and tomorrow I'm going to start something and I'm going to use these drawings that I'm going to pull up right now. But what's kind of interesting, another thing you can do because this is part of the discussion of that layer thing. And they change it a little bit. I was looking at it this morning, so I'll show you kind of how they do it now. So let's pick this guy. Okay, so sometimes <clears throat> you might have something like this, or I've done it with pencil drawings, all sorts of things, and you might want to separate the line work so it's floating on a transparent la layer. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm not going to do this, because a lot of people would do this. And that's just going to be a super sloppy selection. And you'd have to go through here and all the, it just wouldn't work. Yeah, all those hash marks would be impossible. It just wouldn't work. But, okay, so I'm going to go select all, so command all. I'm going to go command C and copy it. And then I'm going to go down here back to my layers palette. This only has one, but you get the point. Normally it would have four. Well, in this, I want it to be all black and white, though. And I'm going to make a new channel. I want to paste this into it. And normally I can invert it. I've noticed it now. I can invert it here usually. Hang on. But I don't think it lets me do it anymore. Yeah, it comes up with that for some reason. So I'm just going to go leave it there. It created an alpha channel. Does that make sense? 
I pasted it into an alpha channel. That makes sense, right? So I'm gonna come back over here. And they've changed, like I said, they changed this up a little bit. I'm gonna put a white layer here. Oops, it's not totally white. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so I should be able to go up here, go to selection, or select, load selection, go to my alpha channel and go okay, and then I'm gonna invert it. And now I'm gonna go to black, and I'm gonna fill it, and there it is. So now what I have, if I get rid of this white, that's sitting on a transparent layer. Does that make sense? Yeah? Does anybody have questions on that? I think that's a really handy thing. Okay. Um, there was one time where we found some, it was a copyright free image, but it was one of those old like Victorian, all that scroll work and pen work and all that stuff. And we needed to separate it. And we, this is how I did it. Okay. Cause I needed to get it up for whatever reason I need to get it on a transparent layer. Okay. And this will be a really accurate, um, you can see how accurate it is. Right. So now, you know, if I wanted to change this to the obvious color, I got to go back to um, you know, and tomorrow I'm, we're going to play around with a little bit of this. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Just remember when you when you load the alpha channel from the um. What, used to, what you used to do is you would paste it into the channel and you would invert it in the channel and deselect it. I don't know why, but I've noticed now it keeps giving me that error message and it doesn't let me do it. I don't know why. Um, so when you load it, when you go to, up to selection, load selection, load the alpha channel, just invert it then and it's fine. Okay? But another, that's just another use for um, channels, right? And then we'll do a little bit later, um, by the way, somebody was asking me about like when somebody has, you know, hair and all that kind of stuff, the alpha channel thing, especially if you've got it on a clean background, like a white background or whatever, um, it's a really good way to select that out. And then there's some ways that you can kind of build the hair back up in it. So if, what, I, what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna go through all the things I gotta go through and then at the end, I'm gonna cover things that, if I, if I have time, I'm gonna cover things like that. Does that make sense? or just cover things, maybe things you guys bring up or whatever. Because <clears throat> I think we're okay on um, our schedule right now. Okay. Just wanna look real quick. Okay, I wanna take my last screenshot and then... I have to go get a new hard drive today. I actually filled up my hard drive. Okay. Okay, so everybody, I always expect you guys to have, that's why I put this time aside to talk about that channel selection thing and you guys don't, you guys already got it. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure I got it, but I'm sure if I play more, it'll, it'll make sure you do because I'm going to, and you know, that video is always there if you need it. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, I'll rewatch and I'll play. But make sure that you get that because as we move forward, you know, all these things are going to, you know, we're going to add to this tool set. Um, like I was just looking at something I was going to go over briefly today, but I was looking at it and I think they've changed some of the parameters on the tool. So I don't really want to, I want to look at it myself. Um, and then there's a, they just did an update. So there's a couple of things that I was going to talk about today that I usually don't anyway when we hand in final work um, that I need to go over and make sure that I'm updated on it because they've changed a few things, you know, just like that. I don't know why I can't invert inside the, um, the channel selection. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter, but I don't know why all of a sudden you can't do that. Um, what else did I do? By the way, you could do that with a pencil drawing. But what you'd want to do is you'd want to go in there and adjust out the levels on your scan or whatever on a pencil drawing. 
make sure you don't have all that gray sort of pencil dust on it or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, just adjust it. And then you could do the same thing with the channel thing and get it transparent on a layer. Okay. That's what I was okay. thinking. Yeah. Um, but we're going to go over some stuff tomorrow. That's, that's another way of doing that. That's simpler. Okay. So, and tomorrow I think, We'll go over that in a few tools, uh, and we're just going to do a, a, a simple exercise. I'll give it to you tomorrow. Um, it's really simple, and I think it's fun. Oh, by the way, um, we talked about the lens flare tool. Do, do you guys remember that? Oops. Okay, so, and I said you can't do it non-destructive, but apparently I haven't tried this. I'm going to do this real quick. Let's just get an image. Let's get... So I suppose that you can go create a new layer or let's go, I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna go, you have to go through the process of doing the lens flare. So it, so it places it, okay? Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but up here, when I use a filter right there where it says last filter, that's, you're gonna see it in a minute. That's gonna come back up to go, if I wanted to the next, like if I did something else, I wanna do that same filter again, I can just drop down, it'll just apply that filter as I did it the last time. Does that make sense? Okay, so <clears throat> let's go up to filter, render, lens flare, <clears throat> and I'm gonna place it, <clears throat> let's say there. You know, and I pick my lens, I like that one. I'm going to say, okay. All right. So there it is, right? But now I'm going to go Command Z and undo it. And I'm going to go here, make a new layer. I'm going to fill it with black. And then I'm going to go filter, lens flare. And there, put it back exactly like I had it placed, okay? And then I'm going to go here and go screen and now my lens flare is on a different layer does that make sense so we're just using okay again that overlay what that overlay does which you should keep in mind gets rid of all the black that comes in really handy right and the reason you run through the lens flare process to begin with is to make sure it's placed where you want it so you go okay i like everything just like that then you just undo it and then it drops into that that little um, thing up here where it goes, oh, you want me to apply that last thing you did? And then it memorized it. So it'll pop in where you want it. That's really handy because I don't like having that lens flare on my image. I don't like that. Okay. And what we're going to do tomorrow, the reason I'm talking about this, is what we're going to do tomorrow, we might use a little lens flare and things like that. Okay. Does that make sense? And tomorrow, I think that exercise is super fun. You guys will, you guys will pop through it, no problem. And then we're going to move on to, um, just some totally other things. Tomorrow we'll start doing that. Does that all make sense? Okay, so I'm giving you today, just finish up your posters, get them loaded, okay? Load them as JPEGs. Um, uh, and I'll probably, hopefully grade them today or tomorrow. Um, and then tomorrow we're on to new things. Does that make sense? Do you guys have any questions? Okay. Um, uh, I'm actually shocked you guys got that that fast, but, um, okay. So this might come in handy tomorrow, by the way, you can still adjust this. So if I go here and I go, I want more warmth in it. I could go here and I can still affect it, make it more saturated, run through the color spectrum, make it a little greener, whatever. Okay. So it still can be also adjusted again. You need to, whenever you're using these tools, if you run across one that goes, you can't use it non-destructively, always jump over to YouTube and look, somebody's probably figured it out, okay? Like I always jump over, because I again, this is one that I, lens flare is tricky because a lot of times if I use it and I'll go, that's cool. I look at the next day and I go, God, that's too much. It's just garish, you know? And I might want to knock it down or I might want to redo it or something, because when you see things the next day, you're seeing them with fresh eyes. It's one of the only ways you can see them with fresh eyes. You can flip them, you can flip them upside down, or you can see them the next day. Does that make sense? And a lot of times these lens flares, man, you gotta be careful, because they can get, some people just put them all over the place and it's just terrible. Mm -hmm. um, 
Elan. Yes. You guys are still going on Thursday, right? Yep. Everybody should go on Thursday. I'm going to try and go. Cool. Try and be there at four. Um, hopefully it's not crowded. You think, you think it'll be crowded? I hope not. <laughs> I always think that, but then I go, how many nerdos even care about that? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's only like a geeky illustration people and stuff. When I went to the Line Decker show, the Line Decker show, Line Decker's a legend, right? Nobody was there. Oh, really? No. Same with Every Alex time I Ross. Went, be like, huh? Same with Alex Ross. Nobody. God, that's crazy to me. Because Alex Ross is huge. Yeah, he's done. I mean, so is Leindecker, but yeah, I, yeah, I don't Leindecker, get it. Yeah, Leindecker's from the golden age. Okay, probably, well, there's a lot of kids who probably don't know who that is. Alex Ross is very much in the in the current yeah, cultural Yeah, comics, video games, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's in the current cultural world. You know what I mean? Still, yeah, nobody, maybe that's why they're thinking of shutting it down. I, somebody wants that space or something. I can't, I can't remember. Somebody wants that space. It might be the school. I think it's the school that wants that space. And somebody told me that I think Fullerton owns it or something. You know? Mm. And I'd be surprised. I, I, that's a good museum. You know? I love it. I mean, they do. Like, I didn't even know they did an Alex Ross show. That actually pisses me off. I would like to have seen those. Um, but getting an opportunity to see things like Alex Ross, who probably doesn't do it. They don't do, a, well, they probably do more now, but they don't do a lot of illustration shows and they sure as hell don't do golden age illustrator shows very much. Yeah. You know, to get to go and study line deckers up close, it's a whole different thing than when they're printed. Same thing when I, there was a Rockwell show like 20 years ago or something in San Diego. And one of the things that you don't see in a lot of them, like some of them are very glazed, but some of them have really beautiful fat paint surfaces and stuff. And you never think of Rockwell like that. You know, and if I hadn't gone to that show, I wouldn't have known that, you know, because they, you know, they photograph them super flat, you know, and they're huge. These paintings are gigantic. They'd be on a cover that big, you know, and you paint them five feet wide, you know. Um, anyway, so them doing that kind of thing, or these golden books, like they're probably, if they're the old golden books, are probably like gouache, watercolor, and stuff like that. So you get to, you know, kind of study the technique, but you can't, it's hard to see it in a book, in a reproduction, okay? So any of you guys, mm -hmm. even if you're not an illustrator or whatever, you should go check it out, okay? Um, all right, guys, I'll let you guys go. Uh, in the morning, we're picking up on this ink stuff, okay? Uh, Mike, one quick question. Sure. The, the grades on Canvas, for some reason, say missing, but they have points. Does that matter? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be. Oh, uh, it might say missing. It's like but a big red missing stamp, and then it's like 10 points. You're fine. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I think what that might be is that I don't have you upload through Canvas. So Canvas goes, I don't have it. Okay. Yeah. As long as I don't really care. If my grade is fine. I was just wondering what that Yeah, means. as long as your grade's fine. And I'm trying to keep in real time on that as much as I can because I only have one class. I only have five classes. It's really hard to do. I okay, really no like, having, I like having one class right now because I can focus on this one thing, which is kind of fun. You know, like I need to do a quick. Um, value painting or whatever for uh when we start this other thing um because i could go out and find one online but the problem with that is i did i've only done that once i did it last uh semester i found this perfect drawing for this thing like, ah, this drawing's perfect i'll do it and then just when i do the video i'll mention who's drawing it is but i don't feel like i can promote it it just doesn't feel right to me it's like that's somebody else's drawing it just doesn't feel right so um i have to i just got to do something so we're going to go over some really cool stuff with this um, and by next week, I would guess that we're more, we're going to start rolling more into image creation as opposed to image manipulation. Okay. Okay. And there's a couple cool things I have on deck for that. I think they're cool. Anyway. Um, and we'll start getting into that. Okay. So, but anybody who doesn't have painting background or anything, don't worry about it. There's, there's way there's workarounds. So don't worry about it. But, um, we have to go over that obviously in here because you need, and then I got some things something Frank turned me on to for his class, his animation class, he goes, I want them to learn this thing. And he did a tutorial for it, I think for his class. I go, I'm just gonna use that tutorial. But um, I wanna make sure that you roll into his, I'm really concerned that you guys roll into his classes because the, he's doing all that 3D stuff. But what people don't realize is like, no, 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 you need to know Photoshop, you need to know Photoshop, you need to know Photoshop. You need to know Photoshop for any of Phil's classes, any of my classes, any of that stuff, okay? Uh, or anything. Um, 
I mean, every program you touch is going to touch Photoshop somehow, usually. Okay. Um, same thing with Premiere, same thing with uh, After Effects, same thing with InDesign. You know, you're going to be creating images to put into those programs. Okay. And again, if you go, and I might do a, a quick talk on it later at the end of the term. And I'll just kind of show you a little bit of Premiere just so you can kind of go, oh my God, it's almost just like Photoshop. Okay. Because that's a good uh, tool to add to your quiver. Okay. Motion graphics, especially if you're a um, graphic designer, I think Illustrator too. Uh, you need to know motion graphics. So, and, and After Effects and Premiere and all those are not that huge a learning curve if you know Photoshop. You know, and I'd also learn InDesign all. But if you're a graphic designer, you're already learning InDesign. But um, motion graphics now is part of the equation of what they want to hire with a graphic designer. Okay. And sometimes even an illustrator. And actually, I'll put up some, I want to put up some links. I'll find them. Um, to some things that I think are doing interesting things in that area, like overlap, because I, I know I'm pushing that really hard, but I think it's really important for you guys now in 2020 to make sure that you, you that you, you know, you've got to have a broad skill set. It's not like it used to be when I came out of school. When I came out of school, I didn't have to know all this crap. Now you guys got to know everything. Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, Mike, are you? Um, I wanted to learn a little bit of After Effects because I have it on my computer. So, um, would you be able to share some um, some methods on what you do with it? I don't After Effects. I don't go into. I go into Premiere a lot. I, I need to. Oh, I, need okay. to learn, I need to learn After Effects, and I'm going to try and learn it from Brian. Oh, okay. Because Brian's awesome, by the way. Um, what would that class be called for After Effects? And uh, Premiere? Let me find out. Uh, it's, okay, yeah. I think the it's new kind of, catalog came out and it's it's all messed up. So, uh, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to ask Brian. I'm like, dude, there's no um, texture class. There's no. He's like, oh, it's all messed up. Frank said they got to redo it. Oh no. So don't go by the one that just went up last night. Oh, I see. Okay. And the one that I reposted. <laughs> um, I, trust me, I downloaded it instantly and started looking and freaked out. Yeah, yeah. same <laughs> here. What's annoying about that is like we're in the middle of all this. I feel like I've got a handle on this online thing. I'm, I, I, you know, I, obviously I'd rather be in the classroom, but I do feel like it's being effective because if I had a class that wasn't effective, I obviously I wouldn't teach it. Um, so, you know, kind of getting past that, but then I don't need this. We don't need a train wreck catalog right now. You know what I mean? Because some people are confused by all this and, and I don't want, and I just saw a thing online and I actually agree with this. I saw it on Twitter and somebody goes, Hey man, if you're going to like this school or that school, they go, don't pay full, you shouldn't be paying full tuition because a lot of schools, and I agree with this probably, they haven't got their crap together when it comes to all this. And I feel, and I know from people I know who are teaching classes where I go, you shouldn't be teaching that class because from what I'm just hearing from your students, you're not teaching that class, but for some reason you are, I don't get it. Like, why are you teaching that class? You know what I mean? Don't, just don't, you know, you're not being effective. Um, anyway, and this person posted that and I, you know, I want to jump into that and go, well, we are effective at this. So don't, don't lump everybody into that equation. Um, and this, a lot of the, I thought my Saturday class would not work at all. It worked pretty good online. Um, you know, so almost anything can work online. Ceramics, probably not. Sculpture, maybe not. But, um, a lot of them are. You know, but we don't need a, a convoluted catalog now. And I have no, I, I have a feeling I know how that happened, which makes it even more aggravating. But um, anyway, what did Brian tell you? Uh, he got worried too, because I said, dude, you're only teaching one class on there. And he's like, what? And then he emailed me back and said, they're going to, they're going to fix it. So don't worry yet. But registration think, doesn't start till July 7th. So we're okay. The problem is, is how many students now go, I want to take a class, I want to take a class with Brian. Because I think Brian's awesome. Yeah, and he's only got one class according to the catalog. Yeah, so how many kids, how many students went, I went to a class with Brian, I went to take, oh, they don't have it. Okay, screw it, I'll take this class. Exactly. That's almost what I did until I emailed him. Maybe I should post on my stuff about it. And post on the, um, the Facebook page for um, Dart, you know? Because I want to make sure Brian gets, you know, his classes run. Because I actually, I think he's pretty valuable. I think that guy knows a lot of stuff that I know nothing about. He knows a ton of stuff about photography. He knows a ton of stuff about 3D, texturing, all that stuff that I don't know anything about. Okay. Any other questions? 
if Michael, if we have a question while we're doing our poster, can we like, you know, email you or something? Yeah. Or ask you a question? It's not I'm just, Yeah. It's what I do. Okay. It's fine. And I'm giving okay. you today to work on it, so it's fine. Um, okay. What was I going to say? I'm going down the hill for a while because I got to go get another hard drive, uh, another <laughs> external hard drive. I can't believe I filled that thing up. But, um, you know, I'm creating so much stuff right now. And a lot of it's video content, so it's like, you know, 100, 100 gigs at a time or whatever. So it's just filling up my hard drive. But anyway, um, yes, if you want to contact me, contact me. Okay. Bring great. it back, I'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay. All right, you guys, I will see you in the morning. Okay. Thank you. All right. And we're still doing stuff. Sure. Cool. Bye, Thank Mike. You upload.